Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are going to discuss about writing custom control methods for Selenium. So basically not, we're not going to really write a lot of custom controls, but we're going to see one of the problems that we really faced in our earlier video while working with the combo box and how we can write it as a method, like a custom control method. And we can see how we can really make use of it while writing the automation itself. So that is one of the most common way of doing it. And I have been talking about that. Like every time you really write anything, just write it like a method so that you can really use it or maybe you can future use it in many different places so that you can reduce the uh, the number of friction that you have within your code while you write it. So in order for using or writing a custom control, all we have to do it is uh, understand the concept of classes in C sharp and then also methods in C sharp. So, so far we have been using the test method of C sharp. We have not even gone through a different class file and wrote a separate method. But this time we are going to be writing and then I will tell you how you can really empower the extension methods in our next video. We'll probably talk about that. We'll write a custom control in this class, uh, in this lecture, and then we'll see how we can extend that in our uh, next video while writing the extension methods and stuff. So in order to do that, as you can see in here by just literally looking at the code at the moment, you can see that we have a driver.find element by.id of x uh, of the send keys like that and similarly there is an x path and then there is a maybe css selector or maybe name or whatever different locator strategy that you have i mean this is literally looking like a very very complex way of writing the code right i mean you can probably write it like a methods so that you can really use it pretty easily to work with or you can just leave it as it is because while we discuss page object model these things will change a bit but uh, but yes you but having a custom controls it's really really helpful but before we jump into actual uh, neat way of writing the uh, custom controls we'll first see the problem that we faced in our earlier video and we can try resolving that in this lecture and then we'll talk about writing the uh, custom controls in much detailed fashion in the next video. So the first thing that I'm going to do is if I go over here to the solution explorer, I'm actually going to create what is called as a new class file. So I'm just going to go create a new class file and I'm going to call this as a custom control class file uh, over here. And then within our custom control class file over here, I'm just gonna make this as public so that it can be accessible. And within this custom control class file, I'm gonna write a method. So basically this method is gonna be performing a combo operation that we just did in our earlier video. So I'm just gonna perform like public void uh, of a combo box control or maybe combo box, just like that. Uh, and then I'm just going to give a string of the control name and string of the value which we uh, we need to select from that particular combo box. That's it. These are the two things which really exist in this combo box control at the moment. And let's jump back to our code that we wrote in our earlier video. So you can see that within this combo control, there are some similarities. So you basically, what you do the automation, you first of all need to see the different similarities of your code. Some of the similarities in this code is that there is a content placeholder, one of all meals combo uh, A W E D. I don't know what does that mean, but there is this uh, element that we select from that particular uh, combo drop down. It has the content placeholder one of all meal combo hyphen drop menu. So over here, this thing that you see here, the, clo the, co the content placeholder one of all meal combo, that looks pretty similar to me. That's the similarity which I was talking about. So why not we just use this as the common pattern? I mean, in this case, I'm just throwing you an example, but maybe in, in many different places, you will have these kinds of similarities. There will be a parent uh, control and that particular parent control will have a name and that same parent controls name will be propagated to all the child elements. In this case, we don't really have a clear parent child relationship a lot, uh, but, but there are cases that you can actually use a 
parent child relation probably i can talk about the parent child relationship after we discuss the custom controls in our next video but this is really really important we'll talk about that and then we'll get to know about that in detail uh, but but yes this is something we can do as well but as of now today in this video what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this similar patterns and we're going to do a different way of identifying so i'm just going to say that string the combo control name is equal to this guy so this is the name which i think it's going to be the parent uh, way of parent control identifier to be used to identify this particular control and then we need to write a method right now so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cut this code completely from here i'm going to come over here i'm just going to paste it regardless so once i paste it because it's a new class file you get a scrolly line on the i web element it tells that what is this i web element i don't even understand what you are talking about so you need to tell by going to this bulb symbol over there if you just select this it says using open qa dot selenium so you need to choose this that one which means it adds the reference over here the using open qa dot selenium on the top which is called as namespaces in c sharp so we need to add that we added that in our earlier videos as well but we didn't really talk about it but yeah this is this is what is namespace in um in c sharp world so once you add that you see that the driver is also throwing me an error now this is another problem because this driver doesn't really exist in this particular class file we need to somehow pass the driver as well over here how to do that i mean there are many different ways of doing it you can use a static driver which is not recommended while you do a parallel execution you can use a non static driver but you need to maintain the instances you can use the contest injection uh, or otherwise call as the ioc containers so that you can pass the instance from one class to another class you can do three different ways of it uh, but as of now for this demonstration like the basic demonstration i think i think i need to make this driver as a static um variable so that you can actually access this driver uh from from anywhere um uh, or what we can do is we can create another class file i still need to do a check in of this code on the github not yet did it's pending and due on my side i will do that also so i'm just going to say that it's a driver helper class file uh and this driver helper class file is going to hold the driver for me probably yeah so which i'm going to do something like a um i web driver of uh driver so what i did now i just tried type something like p r o p and did a double tap then it brings me up something like that this is called as the properties in c sharp and again i have talked about the uh, c sharp for automation testing in our youtube channel please go ahead and watch there because i'm not really going to talk about the c sharp language itself because this is a basics of selenium c sharp dot net core but not basics of c sharp itself so i'm not really going to talk about that but this is the property which you need to be having at this point so once you have this driver helper you can then go all the way over here uh, probably you can go to the unit test one uh, instead of having this as well you can just try to do something like a extending it like an inheritance of the driver helper where you can see once i do this driver helper you can do this driver uh, and this driver helper is something i can extend on the custom controls as well like that once i do this now i get the driver working for me which is pretty cool right uh, now i have the driver dot and as i told you this guy is like a common guy for us the content placeholder which we are getting from the control name so i'm going to do a string interpolation of c sharp 
where I can put a dollar symbol which is really really cool in C sharp I mean it's there in Java as well you can just put a braces like that and you can type control name close the braces so what happens is now the code while it executes it's going to replace the ID is equal to this particular control name to the control name that you are passing in to this method the combo box method and then it replaces I and mean, just retains the awd value for you right that's the one change that you need to do and then the almond value is something that we need to be passing in dynamically so we don't we are not going to always select the, the almond value there we should be dynamically selecting it so this is the value which i'm looking for and I also am doing a drop menu selection from that menu uh, menu option. So again, I can do a string interpolation over here. And we know that this guy is the name that we're going to pass in as a control control name. So I'm just going to do a control name there. The rest reminds the pretty much exactly the same thing, except uh, the almond is going to be the value which we are going to pass to this method as well. Wow, this is looking super custom control to me, All right? So now it is really, really custom. Uh, so which means now if you try to do some operation there, you can easily uh, do that particular operation. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm just gonna cut this value. I don't even require a string uh, initialization for that matter. I can just go to the custom controls uh, like that and we can also do this as a static public static oh this driver will throw me an error yes because it's it has to be static everywhere so custom control uh, control is equal to new of uh, first term control and then control dot uh, combo box where I have to pass this control name, which is the one which I selected. And then I need to select the value, which is nothing but the um, almond. Yeah, that's it. This is the custom method that we wrote just now to see if we could able to select this particular value pretty insanely. So I'm just gonna run this and see what it does. I'm just gonna debug this. So I'm just gonna hold the uh, breakpoint over there on that line so that it it, it actually uh, stops there for us and we can see if that that value is being inserted for us or not so let's see the page is now opened and um, oops ah now we get an error it says that the driver is not being initialized so if we run a code something like this i mean if we do set a value for us over there on the on the driver or something like this it is going to throw us an error like object reference not set to an instance of an object because as you can see here the driver value is actually being set until this point until over here but once you call this particular driver over here the value will be reset because this is a new class that you are calling the custom control class so because this is a new class, it is going to call the driver helper as a new class and this value is going to be reset every time. So uh, now we need to somehow do some sort of contest injection probably or the better way is to do a static on this side and if you do this as a static then you can make this as a static as well and once you make this a static then you don't really have to initialize the custom controls and you can just do a custom control dot combo box like this and you can select the value I mean I don't really like to have a static variable on that particular place like setting the iWeb driver as a static as a whole because that's not the relevant way of doing it but if you want to really uh, do it at least on this particular point of time this is how you should be doing it like having a static iWeb driver now we'll try to execute this what is going to happen so 
if I try to debug this code this time, let's close this window. And you can see that it actually selected the value almond for us pretty quickly. So now it actually gets that particular object, the IE web drivers uh, or the web driver object for the Chrome driver object for us over here, and it works fine. The reason being the driver helper has a static IWeb driver, and that's the reason it could able to perform an action for us. Uh, I mean, this is not a recommended practice of doing it, but it actually serves the purpose, at least for this case. But while we actually uh, need to go big uh, on a bigger uh, coding way of doing it, probably this is not the ideal way of doing it. We will talk about that uh, in our upcoming videos. But yes, this is what is actually working with a custom controls in Selenium. In our next video, we'll discuss about the extension methods or even before that, we'll first try to check in this code on the GitHub, which is the next video. And then we'll talk about the custom controls in the following videos. And we also need to discuss about the parent-child relationship in the locator strategy. Meet you in our next video. Thank you.